Joining us right now are Voya Chief Market Strategist Doug Cote and Value Advisory Founder Howard Rosencrantz. Good to see you guys. Thanks so Good much for joining you. us. Thank First, Janet Yellen, your thoughts on her commentary yesterday? Yeah, it had everything uh, to do with the U.S. dollar and its impact on the global economy. What she's trying to do is make sure keep uh, a lid on oil prices. It would be a Fed policy mistake if the dollar continued to surge. So I think she's a hawk and does clothing. I think ultimately she raises rates, but she's going to take her time because she doesn't want to collapse the global economy. On the U.S. economy, everything's good. She's met her mandate on in inflation. Her, her own PCE inflation index was 1.7. That should give her clearance and, and the uh, unemployment as well. So. so as she was talking yesterday, you saw the market moving up uh, because basically people were surmising that, okay, since she's talking about gradually moving, that means you're not going to get any returns anywhere else other than the stock market, Howard. Yeah, you've got to go to one sort of asset class, and that could be stocks. You could also conceivably go to hard assets. It's a... So you, you go like this gold. Gold, gold or real estate, certainly, either of the two. It's interesting that you suggest that she's really a hawk underneath or that there's some sort of hawk, hawk in her. meaning she would want to raise rates. No, no, Doug, meaning she, she wants to lower rates. Yeah, she, she ended QE. Uh, she, she raised rates in December. She's going to get it done, but she's not going to make a policy. She mistake. ended QE she after you had had a Herculean right, amount of force going right, into the market. Right, well, I don't think she's it. shown any hawkishness at all. She's she, following exactly. Well, what are we talking about? I, QE 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah, I think there's been a noticeable shift in how she's approached this because previously in September and December, we sort of disregarded the moves in the dollar because you know what? It's not a big deal for the U.S. economy. It's not that externally oriented. We disregarded the move in oil because you know what? It's a net positive for the economy. Not we, but I mean the Fed actually did. Now the narrative is really shifting. What she's saying is actually the U.S. dollar does hurt profitability and therefore could have a direct eventually on the economy. So yes, we do care about that. The second thing she said about oil prices that really I thought was interesting is she said that yes over the next few years not few quarters few years this is going to be a net positive for the economy but in the meantime guess what oil companies are doing guess what oil dependent countries are doing they're slashing budgets and the fiscal drag from oil producing economies slush, slashing those budgets is, according to our estimations, 10 times as big as the fiscal drag that we saw in 2013. So I, I really find it interesting that she is starting to shift that narrative. Mm. So the good news for the risky assets, they're never ever going to raise The global rates, environment <laughs> has, been, has become exactly, as you said, very precarious. While we might have liked the, the windfall that consumers got here from lower oil prices, at some point it became a negative when we got too low. She recognizes that and she's tried to put a well, stop to the appreciation the of the dollar. the bottom line. What does 2016 look like? Am I going to get hurt if I put my money in the stock market? Give me the bottom no, line. No, no. You, you want to be, cons we're constructive on the market, 2250, 126 earnings, and you want to be broadly diversified. 126? Uh, That's a high number. For, for earnings. For earnings, yeah. Uh, 126, yes. And, uh, That's well we think, above consensus. Yeah, we think it, uh, the second half, it comes back. Uh, but, but broad global diversification in equities, and don't forget about fixed income because fixed income are the best returning uh, asset classes this year, yes. and it's the risk control that you want. You so buy the 10-year at 1.8 uh, and change yield? You know, Not a lot of return there. Uh, well, but it's if you did, we've been in, you're we've been in government for a long time, and when, when the markets are volatile, which they have been and they will continue to be, it helps you. The opportunity is really in corporates. If you look at the spread between yes. government corporate and bonds. corporate, Absolutely. either high quality or you go into the junk market as the economy will be okay, you're coming off near record spreads between junk and quality yeah. going back just two months. I mean, take the fiscal crisis out. You're talking about five, six, seven hundred basis points, which certainly is not warranted. The health of the economy and even the health of the global economy is in better shape now, particularly with $40 oil versus $25 I oil. Feel like Janet Yellen is looking backwards. Let's look forward for a second, guys, because the first quarter earnings are about to start flowing. You say you're looking for high earnings, but earnings are uh, 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 expected to be down what, Dagan? 7%? 9%? We've been nine. talking about this last couple of days. 9%. Nine, nine, nine nine percent. Nine percent <laughs> decline yeah, so. in earnings for the first quarter. Is that priced into the market? Are we going to see a big sell-off when the earnings start coming in? I, I think it is to a degree priced into the market. You know, the reason I kind of raised my eyebrow at 126 earnings because the S&P earnings estimates are about for 118. So that's, that's a number that's been revised down quite a bit, which is my, why, Maria, I say that a lot of it has been priced in. 
But we really have to see what the guidance from the CEOs ha has to say. What they have to say about the rest yeah, of right. the year. Do they see actually any improvements in the trends? Does the 5% or some decline in the value of the U.S. dollar, does that start to amount to perhaps earnings revision? Well, well, the dollar has stabilized, so it's going to be, it's Decline. going to not be a drag on it, earnings it, going it forward. It wasn't stable yesterday. But, 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 but is that Q1. true, though? Is that true, though? Because if you're a Caterpillar selling tractors to Brazil at this level of the U.S. dollar, even though it's down a little, it's still all the way up mm. here. I think if you go back to yeah. February, people thought that it was a recession and it was imminent. Yeah. So now I think there's any sort of relief. I think you'll start to look past the first quarter and go to the rest of the year. You've got some bulls on the set here. Doug Cote, Howard Rosencrantz, good to see you, gentlemen. We'll be right back.